Hello, welcome to South Coast Focus. I'm your host, Susan Adelat. Today, we'll be sharing three unique stories about people living in Orange County who channel their passion and dedication through their individual crafts. We'll meet a Zumba instructor who brings dancing into people's homes. We'll learn how a gamer's hard work and determination led him to going pro and how cooking at home has helped one retired chef stay afloat. If you've stepped into a gym in recent years, you've probably witnessed a Zumba class. Zumba is a unique exercise dance program that was conceived in the late 1990s in Colombia by choreographer Beto Perez. What sets Zumba apart from other exercise programs is that it combines several dance styles into one, such as salsa, reggaeton, merengue, and cumbia to provide an invigorating workout. The benefits of Zumba have encouraged certified instructor Larissa Sosa to use her dancing expertise to influence others to get active. Let's take a look at her story. Since the COVID-19 pandemic first hit, many people were advised to stay home. With businesses such as gyms forced to close to contain the spread, some people have found ways to staying fit while still being connected. Zumba instructor Larissa Sosa manages to keep exercising and dancing to the beat by posting her videos online and even hosting live sessions for her friends to watch. I am Latina. I love music. And I Latin music, and that's what we do with Zumba. I, I usually love to dance. It doesn't matter what kind of music it is. I love everything. So, yeah, I just, I just like to dance. Online, Larissa set up a personal Facebook blog she calls Unafraid, where she live streams and posts all of her Zumba workouts for her friends to dance to. But she also posts inspirational messages to help keep them going. To her peers, she can be somewhat intense. But she only does it because she knows that they can exceed. Larissa is able to bring out the best in everyone, regardless of their skill level. It's a form of expression. It's a way to feel good. You know, when you dance, you just don't think in problems or nothing at all. You just have fun and uh, you sweat when you're doing it. So it's, it's really a way to, to leave out the stress, stressful, a stressful day. When she's not doing Zumba, Larissa also posts videos of herself working out with dumbbells or even doing push-ups, one time for a challenge that supported mental health awareness. Larissa encourages everyone to stay fit and exercise, even during these troubling times. But Larissa is still passionate about her Zumba workouts and tries to do as many as she can for her fans. She does have some advice for any newcomers eager to start. Just love, if you love to dance, that's all you need. It doesn't matter, does it? It's just, it, it, you don't have to be perfect, you don't have to be perfect and everything that you move because it's, it's the movement is movement and as long as you have fun as long as you um, entertain yourself and others that's all you need that's it just be brave get up in front of people and just dance even though gyms have started to reopen Larissa Sosa still practices and teaches Zumba during special events she still finds both the effort and passion to keep on dancing and encourages both her viewers and peers to find theirs too. If you'd like to connect with Larissa to take part in one of her Zumba classes, you can reach out to her on Facebook so she can add you to her group and you can start getting fit while having fun. You might have heard of eSports or electronic sports, a world dedicated to playing video games competitively. Esports arose in the 1990s and early 2000s and initially had a grassroots support system. But after 2010, it evolved into a global mass supported phenomenon. Within Southern California, we're home to a thriving esports scene for the best selling fighting game of all time, with over 20 million copies sold Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. The local scene has grown significantly thanks to devoted fans holding events and tournaments daily for the past five to six years. Our next story focuses on Smash competitor, Charlie Anton, who uses his love for the game to push him to be the best he can be. Saw the sparks on that illusion, almost caught it, but right now Charlie, Charlie has everything. He has the ledge. Great ledge presence. 
Very okay. interrupt spot. Oh, oh he gets that's the, the one that matters. That's the one. And that's the one it. that takes he it. He pops off. Charlie Yo. takes it over Larry. That's it. Charlie finally getting that. Point. Charlie Anton is a 20 year old professional Super Smash Brothers Ultimate player, going by the alias Charlie the King at events and online. Growing up, Charlie had always been into Nintendo's line of video games, quickly coming across Super Smash Bros. through his cousin, and continued to play the series' new releases throughout his life. For those who may not know, Super Smash Bros. is a competitive action game where you can play as video game icons such as Mario from Super Mario and Pikachu from Pokemon to knock opponents off the screen. Charlie went to his first tournament at age 14 for Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, feeling confident in his ability to win games as he was the best amongst his friends. However, this first embark in the competitive play ended abruptly, as he was handily defeated by the competition. You know, it motiv how, seeing how bad it was, seeing how much I had to learn, it motivated me to keep trying and, and, and to get to, to that uh, high of a level, and that's why I still play to this day. You know, I always feel like I can, I can be better and I always want to. I want to be the best. I want to be the best player. When I, when I first got the game, that's the first thing I said, I want to be the best player for this game. At age 17, after three years of practicing continuous playing, Charlie eventually peaked to be ranked the 35th best player in the world during the second year half season of 2017 in the Panda Global Rankings version 4, and at its 67th best player overall in Super Smash Bros. for Wii U's all-time competitive lifespan. Alongside simply practicing for hours a day while streaming on Twitch.tv, Charlie says he spends most of his time simply watching videos of himself playing the game, whether they be recorded videos of his practice with other players online, or recorded stream matches of him or other players in competitions. He finds that it is important to analyze your or another person's play so you can see what actions and decisions made leads to positive or negative results. He followed this training regimen for 5-7 to seven days a week for a full year from 2019 to 2020, and as of March 2020, rose to be the undisputed number one player within Southern California for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, after only peaking fourth once throughout his Super Smash Bros. for Wii U career. When it comes to competing, Charlie remarks that being able to play the game itself isn't a primary reason for his passion in competitive gaming, but it is instead the people he gets to see at the events. And even outside of all of that, just the local scene and seeing all my friends, like seeing the people, it's it's truly a beautiful experience. Like the regulars that show up to our local tournaments, they are such good people. They're 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 great to hang around. They're great to talk to. They're great to just feel the general positive positive vibes vibes from. We all get along. It's like one big family, and I love seeing their faces. And that's honestly one of like that's the that's the biggest reason I go. I, a lot of the time it's I love competing, but at the same time it's stressful. But then I'm like, oh, I get to see my friends. I get to see these wonderful people. And yeah, that's that's what keeps me going back. While entering local events is next to impossible in today's situation, the Smash Brothers community continues to host events online so people can still get their competitive itch going. If you have an interest in entering an online tournament for Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, you can check out Smash.gg, which is an online tournament hosting website with accessible search listings to find you one at a time most convenient for you. And if you'd like to keep up with Charlie the King, you can always find him on Twitter at Charlie Haruno or on twitch.tv slash Charlie DeKing, where he streams Super Smash Bros. Ultimate several days a week. If you're interested in participating in an online tournament for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, check out smash.gg for more information about local events. Who knows, you may even face the king himself. California is booming with people from all walks of life, making it one of the most culturally diverse places in the nation. It's also home to a large population of Afghan Americans. Arising in 1979, the nearly 10 year long Soviet Afghan war devastated Afghanistan, leading millions of Afghans to flee the country and seek refuge in neighboring countries. From there, many found their way to the US. Unfortunately, having to leave one's country behind can lead to potential feelings of disconnect with one's own culture. Let's explore how refugee and retired chef Adam Adelat has managed to stay in touch with his Afghan roots after all these years. Food. It offers us nourishment, but it can also bring joy. It can be beautiful, and it can even be messy and unpredictable. For Adam Adelat, it's a remedy. 
Adam is a retired chef who owned a family-run Afghan restaurant in Lake Forest, California, before it unfortunately closed late last year. Having lost his business and being faced with the global COVID-19 pandemic, Adam found a return to cooking as a way to cope with the stress. Adam originally hails from Kabul, Afghanistan. He and his family immigrated to the United States in the early 1980s due to the Soviet-Afghan War. Although he has lived in the U.S. for decades now, his background still greatly influences the way he cooks. Afghan dishes typically consist of rice, meat, colorful spices from turmeric to sumac, and most importantly, lots and lots of onion. Although most dishes satisfy a savory palate, Adam likes to also focus on less common recipes that bring a bit of sweetness to the plate. Today, he is making kadu borani, which is made from pumpkin. <laughs> On top of cooking being a connection to his past and a way to cope with the pandemic, Adam also finds that through food, he can bond with his children and pass down the Afghan way of cooking. He even has weekly long distance video sessions with his son, Haroon whom he shares his favorite Afghan recipes with. If you'd like to learn more about Afghan cooking, Chef Adam is currently in the process of launching his YouTube channel, where he'll be sharing recipes from different regions of Afghanistan. Keep an eye out for his future videos. Today, we learned about three inspiring individuals, whether it's teaching Zumba online, playing Smash Brothers competitively, or cooking authentic Afghan cuisine at home. We saw that people can connect to the world and others around them through their passions. Even amongst the adversity of the COVID-19 pandemic, their stories have shown us that you could still persevere and pursue your ambitions. Once again, I'm your host, Susan Adelat, and thank you all for tuning in to South Coast Focus. Take care. Welcome to our show, South Coast Focus, coming at you from Saddleback College. For tonight's show, we've assembled four incredible stories from Southern California. Yes! Our first segment on our broadcast is of a small town entrepreneur who came up from humble beginnings in Sonoma County. Tommy Schieffer, known as Below Zero, is one of the staggering 7.5 million other streamers in the Twitch community. However, Tommy has learned, adapted, and reached all-time high numbers in his career, and is now sponsored by G Fuel, UMG Gaming, and Electronic Gamers League. Let's find out what the streamer is all about. Below Zero's career dates five years from now when he started his first stream during the summer of 2015. Yes! Oh, let's go! Yes! Yes! Go! Oh! 
His pog, or in layman's terms, excited nature, which is what you just saw in the last clip, quickly grabbed the attention of new incoming viewers. My channel progressed, I would say, probably a lot quicker than most channels do, just because for me, I had a lot of my friends tune in whenever I went live. I would tell my friends, please just tune in just so I could get that viewer count up a little bit. And then from there, it, it kind of just kept growing and growing and growing every few months. Like, I think it was about two weeks in, I hit 100 followers, which is really, really quick for the most part. The man gives the viewers what they want. So much so that he decided to have a punishment stream where he would get shot in the back with a paintball gun every third consecutive loss in a popular game, Fall Guys. It's really, really, really fun. I would highly recommend uh, at least just giving streaming a try to a lot of people. It's really fun just meeting all these, all these new people, where they're from, different time zones, what they're like and all this. And uh, I mean, obviously you get some uh, not so great people, but I mean, you, just, you can just ban, time them out. It's not a huge deal, but for the most part, I would 100% recommend it. For anyone not familiar, Twitch is a multi-billion dollar company and the biggest streaming platform ever created. It's a magical place where people's dreams can become a reality by getting that sought after beautiful purple check mark. I think I got this after two years, two years of streaming, and I think it was about a year and a half ago at this point. Yeah, I think about a year and a half is when I actually got partnered. Below Zero currently has over 22,000 followers and over 200 subscribers, and with Social Blade's projections, in the next five years, he could double his follower count and increase his view count by over 500%. Uh, if you're just getting started on Twitch, I would highly, highly, highly recommend streaming, finding a game to stream that is not way oversaturated. So that way you don't get buried at the bottom because odds are new viewers are not going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom just to find someone with zero to five viewers. And also if you could post to YouTube as well, whether it's stream highlights or just other content on YouTube, YouTube is also a fantastic way to grow your uh, Twitch channel. So if you're a fan of competitive Pokemon, if you're into silly games like Among Us or Fall Guys, or just enjoy the idea of being able to chat real time with an incredibly entertaining content creator, then head over to twitch.tv forward slash below zero TV and give this man a follow. Well, whether you are a Twitch veteran or a rookie to the site like myself who just learned what the term POG is, it's not hard to see that Below Zero has nothing but a bright future ahead of himself over on his POG channel. You can watch more of his content at twitch.tv slash below zero where he streams six to seven days a week at 10 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Nearly 40% of the U.S. workforce are learning how to deal with the various stresses of the pandemic, such as decreased human socialization and an isolated workplace. Next up, we'll see how even the world of IT has changed enormously. We'll meet Gary Goff, a father who has started working from home as one of the two remaining IT technicians for a small business. Here's a story. Gary Goff is an IT technician that works for a small business and manages their computers and network. He has been with them for nearly a decade and oversees their technical needs, makes sure everything is running smoothly. IT work from home is complicated as it involves connecting to another computer and taking control of it remotely. This makes it hard to fix any problem that is not software based as a hardware problem requires Gary to go into the office and meet with another employee and retrieve the computer. This not only is worrying due to COVID, but any hardware problems that occur take much longer to fix than if it was in the office. I work in a small office and in the past when I was in the office, people would just walk up and ask questions or things would be, could be changed very easily. But now everything's remote. The few people that do go into the office have a tendency to just do things as they would normally, but Sometimes they don't communicate, so I'm left having to guess what they've done and how to fix it. Over the years, Mr. Goff has had to adjust to many changes, the largest being COVID-19 and having to remote in from home. Prior to COVID, 
his coworkers would come into the office and he could focus on maintaining one network. Now he must work on maintaining not only that, but their home networks as well. So we did the best we could in the very short amount of time once it was finally decided that we were gonna shut down our office and send everyone home to gather all the necessary tools for people to work from home and train them to do something they had never done in the past. Working from home allows him to practice his hobbies in his off time. He has been gardening to kill time and relax. It has helped him stay calm and enjoy himself during the lockdown as his job has become increasingly stressful due to its new uncertain nature. At any moment, he may be forced to drop everything and get on a call to fix a broken network. The changes to one's work or home life are always hard to overcome, especially so when they are one and the same thing. Hopefully, Gary can keep his spirits up and his network streaming. Skateview.com finds that women make up only 17% of the skateboarding community. In a sport dominated by male athletes, Sofia Marquez is a non-traditional skater who challenges the mainstream simply by being herself. In this segment, Sofia's skills and dedication to skateboarding are shown off to the ultimate degree. Sofia Marquez is a young female OC skater who strives in creating a safe space for all skaters and encourages others to do the same. She tells us about how her brother and his friends inspired her to get into skating and a bit about what her main method of skating is. So my senior year of high school, my brother was actively skating a lot and I knew I was going to need a new activity to preoccupy myself with since I wouldn't have marching band anymore. So I figured I might pick up skating because it looked a lot of fun and my brother was super into it and I thought his friends were really cool and I liked the way they skated and the way they dressed and the whole idea of being a part of counterculture was very interesting to me, so I thought I might try it, and then I didn't, and I really liked it. So I ride Goofy, and it's not the most common, apparently, but I feel like I've met a lot more people who ride Goofy than people who ride regular. But the way you figure that out is, say you're going to take a step up a flight of stairs, whatever foot you put up first, that's going to be your dominant foot. With help from her brother and new friends, Sophia finally finds her inner OC skater and moves to bigger and better things. Sophia enters her first competition in 2018, snagging first place in a female division of only two other women. Currently, so many events have had to be canceled due to the pandemic. Fortunately, Sophia was still able to enter in the competition, but reflects on how difficult it was given the current atmosphere. Instead of being able to compete in person, Sophia had to send in a minute-long video of her showing off her skills. They all had an online alternative where you would basically film a one-minute clip of yourself doing tricks and like use iMovie or whatever to compile it together. So many people there, and you're just like trying to get your clip, and there's people snaking you, and your per your peripheral vision is kind of messed up because you're wearing a helmet and a mask. And I'm not usually used to wearing a helmet when I skate, but I had to tend to this competition. And it, it was very frustrating, but in the end, I, I uh, think it paid off because I got first place again. Not only does Sophia encourage others by being a female in a male-dominant activity, but she also wants others to feel comfortable enough to start skating no matter who you are. Sophia has created a group that tailors to people who wouldn't usually feel comfortable stepping into the bowl on their own. Trick Chicks is a safe skate place for anybody to come and show what they've got or learn from some amazing riders. There's a bunch of us gals and um, queer, gender non-conforming people, um, people of color, just general minorities, generally speaking. And we all got together and we would share our clips and then like, I, I'll, post, I'll post a clip on the page because I ran it. Uh, we had a really good turnout and I think that was partially due to how much work I put in and a bunch of the other girls as well. I brought boards for everyone in case they didn't have one. I had protective gear, snacks, water, um, sunscreen, first aid. This experience not only encouraged so many to pick up their boards, but it also taught Sophia a lot about herself and how she can continue to encourage others not to be fearful and just go for it. And it must be on your own prerogative to want to try something new. There's a phrase 
You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. It's basically the same thing. They want to, it has to be their own personal choice to try something new, to try something scary. You can't just stay stagnant. You gotta grow as a person and as a skater. You push yourself, because if you don't push yourself, you're not gonna get anything done. Even now, Sophia continues to enter into competitions to show off her prowess as well as progress. Her dedication to the sport reminds us that no matter how many times we fall, we must get back up and just keep on riding. Speaking of pursuing one's dreams, we have a recently established recording studio in the Inland Empire determined to make a name for themselves. Working with artists across the nation, they push the boundaries of genres such as rap and R&B. So even though they are a small studio, their reputation and influence speaks, or more so sings volumes. Let's take a look. Inland Records, a Corona, California-based recording studio, was founded earlier this year by music artist Nikosan and his good friend slash COO Marcus Fuller. Even though its establishment coincided with the beginning of the pandemic, Nico and Marcus were still able to build Inland Records from the ground up in their home county of the Inland Empire. We needed to bring what we knew back home. We've been doing multiple things in LA, Orange County. You always end up coming back home, just home is home. You can't really like, everyone knows that feeling of when you get home and you're just comfortable. They have been able to work with both aspiring and established music artists, not just in the state, but even across the country. This constant collaboration with numerous artists, both in California and across the country, is how they kept themselves above water during the pandemic. Its start definitely came out of one of the most difficult times. However, Nico and Marcus seemed to see the obstacles less as roadblocks and more of pathways to better things. A lot of things that went happen, doors have been closed. I think that that's what turned it into in the records. It wasn't planned, it just naturally kind of evolved. A steady rise in the industry through quality audio and even at times video production, Inland Records is a strong driving force in the form of its team. Nobody really understands like the work and the effort and the grind that it takes to get there. You know, everyone wants to get to the top, but nobody wants to put the work in. With all the obstacles and the hard work that it took to overcome them, Inland Records stayed resolute to their mission as a recording studio. The pandemic hasn't slowed down their path on creating music from out of their home county of the Inland Empire, nor do they believe anyone else should be hindered in creating their own music for the world to hear. And the records wants to pave a way for kings and queens out of the end of the empire to create and open opportunities for people just like us. But what does the future look like for Inland Records? The future is bright. The future is really bright. If we keep being firm on our core values of respect, grind, sacrifice, and family, that uh, it's always going to prosper and we'll always progress. It seems as if Inland Records has been able to gain traction even among the hardest of times, leading the way to a future where not only music artists, but also other creatives can be a part of. The cherry on top with Inland Records is how much experience they allow for creatives, whether they're musical or visual arts, to receive from their operations. We hold an internship for uh, students and graduates to be able to obtain college credits to get more experience within the uh, music industry. We also shoot music videos, any, any type of videography, photography, you're able to just showcase your skills and be able to show who you are as a person and be able to grow with this. From music to photography to videography, In and Records has become a hub for creatives of all kinds to frequent. Nico's and Marcus's ability to establish and grow a studio in the Inland Empire while at the beginning of a pandemic has showcased not only their determination, but also talent for creating something worthwhile. There will always be obstacles to stand in the way of our dreams, but it's establishments like Inland Records that remind us how the outstanding outliers come from the most outlandish situations. The sky's the limit, honestly. Music? To my ears. Inland Records' perseverance during these trying times is the beacon of light we all need. Hopefully, their ambitious start is just the tip of the iceberg as they work to develop and flourish. We've gone on to meet popular Twitch streamer Below Zero, IT tech Gary Goff, phenomenal skateboarder Sofia Marquez, and last but not least, recording studio Inland Records. All four stories have showcased their tenacity and dedication in their crafts by overcoming seemingly insurmountable obstacles, and we all surely can take a little inspiration from each and every one of them. Well, that's tonight's show, folks. I'm your host, Varun Puri. Thanks for tuning in with us here on South Coast Focus, and we'll see you next time.